In this episode, we're taking the coveted Motion Raceworks vented catch can and turning it into a sealed catch can. What's up guys and welcome back to In The Shop TV. My name is Mike and if you're just joining us for the first time, that is my 1955 Chevy truck project that we've been working on for about a little over a year and a half now. Not too long ago, I made a video about this catch can and about catch cans in general and how you plumb them, vented versus sealed, and which of them is better for your application or if you need any at all. If you guys haven't seen that video, it's really cool. You should check it out. I'll leave a link in the comments and in the description so you guys can watch it if you want. So I am running this can vented, as you can see, by a little air filter right here. And I have a line coming off of each valve cover, basically feeding this can, and then it vents the atmosphere. Really simple plumbing. So why am I changing it to a sealed can? Is there anything wrong with running a vented can? Absolutely not. It works fantastic, actually. This truck is really going to become a cruiser. Um, you know, date night, car show, that type of thing. Just kind of driving around and chilling. I'm not racing, um, and I don't have a tremendous amount of power. This is pretty much a stock LY6 we're looking at with... You know, some bolt-ons, maybe 400 horsepower, nothing crazy. So I think that really the benefit of the vented catch can is to get all that crankcase pressure and just get it out. One of the drawbacks to a vented catch can, though, is just a byproduct of how it's designed, which is that you release those kind of vapors and maybe if there's any smoke or steam or anything into the atmosphere. Sealed catch cans take all that stuff and send it back into the intake so it can be reburned. Is one better than the other? Not really, it just depends on your application. I think if you were gonna run really high horsepower or boost, or if you have power adders or something like that, vented is definitely the way to go just because you wanna get rid of all that excess pressure. So why am I changing it to a sealed can? Well, as I said, this is gonna be a cruiser. And with that bit of smoke and steam that comes out of there and the odor and the vapors and all that, Every time I start this truck up and I work in the shop, it gets all over my clothes. It smells up the cab, it smells up the engine bay, um, and I'm just kind of over it. Truthfully, it's not really that big of a deal, but I like experimenting, and I just kind of got this idea, and I think it would be a cool video to just show people that there are other options that you don't always have to play by the rules, so to speak. I don't want to buy another catch can that's sealed in nature because I really like the construction of this Motion Racer one. It's a great catch can. I like how it has the dual inlets on top and has a really good baffle system built into it. I'm gonna keep it plumbed the way it is with the two lines that you see right there running off of each valve cover. We're gonna take that filter element off right there and come up with a system to return all that stuff that the engine produces from the crankcase back into the intake. All right, let's get started. So it looks like one and a quarter is the outside dimension of that kind of standpipe sticking up out of there. The inner dimensions on the element is one and three eighths. All right, so it's the next day. I went and rounded up all my parts. So let me show you guys how I plan to do this conversion. So I've taken the air element off the catch can. We're done with that. In its place, we're gonna be using something called a Fernco Quick Cap. And this is what they look like. If any of you guys are plumbers out there, or if you've done plumbing before in the past, this is basically just like a rubber pipe cap that goes on. It's kind of sealed at the end, open down here. Got a little uh, hose clamp on the bottom of it. So for anyone interested in doing this particular conversion, that's a one and three eighths diameter opening on that standpipe. And this is a 1.38 opening adapter on this Fernco. The part number for this is Fernco QC for quick cap 1.38. So I'm gonna put this one aside, it was just for illustration. And what I have here is my contraption that I made already. So what I did was obviously put a hole through the top of it. Then the bottom, we opened up a washer so we have something metal to grip to and put a stainless steel nut around our fitting and tightened it to the top of this. It has standard pipe threads on the bottom where it catches that nut and a regular 8AN fitting on top. So before we install this part, what I want to do is start it up and kind of do like a before and after. So you guys get a little bit of a sense of whatever kind of steam or smoke wisp out of there in its vented form. And then once we get everything hooked up to the intake, we shouldn't see anything coming out of there at all. Let's slip this back on. Let's get our sealed contraption on. Now I did get a swivel fitting, should you wanna actually wrap this hose in a different location than where these two are going. 
you could put it in any which configuration you want without loosening that nut. I'm gonna keep it lined up just the same. Follow that same line back to the intake. All right, so with this in place, I'm gonna make up a line that runs from here to the back of the intake. For that, I'm just gonna use a cheap piece of heater hose. It doesn't have to be fuel line or anything expensive. It doesn't matter in this case. We're using 6AN or 3 8 line now for the catch can as it is. I'm gonna step it up to 8AN because it's one line out and two lines in, and I wanna be able to carry that extra vapor back. So here's our inexpensive heater hose. I went ahead and slid some tech flex over just to dress it up a little bit and I'm finished this end and we'll get it hooked up. All right, let's hit that start button and see how it works. All right, so it works just fine. As you guys saw, there's no smoke anymore coming out of the catch can, which is kind of the goal that we wanted to achieve. I may still run it vented, I may not. I really just wanted to do this experiment. You know, when I did the initial catch can video and how they work and the different types of catch cans and all that, it got a really good response. And I go on these forums a lot and, and I see a lot of people really debating about you know, you can't run a vented catch can because you have a vacuum leak. Well, that's completely not true. That's just, if you plummet like a bonehead, then you'll have a vacuum leak. If you plummet to atmosphere, um, it's impossible to have a vacuum leak. So um, I just really wanted to go over these different options. So if people that you think that you can't run a vented catch can, which is not true, or people that in my case, maybe you just want to not have that smoke or the oil vapor or whatever it is in the, in the engine bay or in the cab or whatever the case is, this is another option for you. Now, to be fair, I did call Motion Raceworks about doing this and, you know, essentially between them and me and now thousands of people, eh, don't say anything. Um, they're, essentially what I'm doing is just making a recirculating or a sealed catch can out of their vented catch can. Um, there should be no issue with this, but they said, you know, obviously because they are a business they did say that, you know, listen, it's not designed to be run that way. It's designed to be vented to atmosphere, so use it at your own risk. Um, what they did say that a lot of people will do is they'll take a line that we just made coming off of the exit to the can, and they'll plumb that somewhere inconspicuous, like through the inner fender or something like that, where any type of smoke that comes out um, will just kind of get lost in the shuffle and you won't really see it, which is a good idea too, if that's something that you're concerned about. The other thing is, that smoke or, or steam or whatever it is that you see coming out of there, it should always be um, a somewhat minimal amount. You shouldn't, it shouldn't be like billowing like a freight train. You know what I mean? If you see that, you've got some serious blow by and, and some issues going on there that you gotta take a look at. But you know, it's kind of like if you see, um, I don't know how to compare it, but maybe like a lit cigarette laying in an ashtray burning, um, that amount of smoke coming out is 
completely and totally normal unless you have like no ring gap whatsoever. You're gonna get, every engine's gonna have a tiny bit of low body that comes out and that's what you're seeing. So um, totally normal, I, you know, I, I'm on the fence on whether or not I wanna see that or don't wanna see it. I'm kinda like, you know, thinking ahead, if I pull into a car show and there's a little bit of smoke creeping out of the, the hood or the fender or whatever, is that gonna bother me? And on one hand, I'm kinda like, well, I'm venting at the atmosphere and it's supposed to happen, so who cares, you know? On the other hand, I'm just, you know, you put so much work and time and money into this stuff and you just want everything to be perfect. And I don't want anyone looking at me like, why is that thing smoking from the hood? And I don't know, maybe it's stupid, but it's just, that's my logic. I may still put this back to being vented. Um, I really just wanted to do this as an experiment to show that it could be done. And if anyone out there is interested in doing this, this is a really good, easy way to do it. And if you don't want to put it back into the intake, um, like a recirculate system, Motion Raceworks idea is really great of like venting it someplace else. You could take that line, you can put it down in the wheel well, you could put it, you could take this line, you could put it down there by the bottom of the radiator and just have it smoke out wherever. You probably won't even notice it, whatever you do. But anyway, um, I hope you guys like this video. This is probably the quickest, most easiest project I've had to do in a long time. And the thing I actually really like about this is if I want to go back to having this vented, um, you're unscrewing a band clamp, a hose clamp, popping that off and popping it off the back of the intake and putting the filter back on the, or the element back on the can. So that's about literally um, a minute and a half to a two minute conversion um, to, to swap it back or, and to put it back and forth for whatever reason if you wanted to do that too. So another thing I wanted to mention, if you had a vented catch can and you end up doing a conversion like this or switching to a sealed catch can, whatever, one thing that you may notice if your can is routed far away from your intake, kind of like how mine is where you have excessive hose length and all that, something new that'll creep up that you're gonna hear is when you turn off the engine, you're gonna hear a little bit of a hiss. Um, nothing's broken, that's totally normal. What that is is that your system is pressurized and all that pressure is leaking back out here through your cold air intake and that throttle body plate is opening and you'll just hear a slow and all the air will leave the system. So if you hear that, don't freak out. Um, that's just supposed to happen. But I've heard reports of people who run the catch can with shorter lengths of hose, um, somewhere like on the firewall or something like that, where um, it, that doesn't happen at all. So it's usually kind of linked to having a longer hose length where, it, or like a more of a remote location for your catch can. I don't know. I just kind of had fun doing this. I just wanted to do it as an experiment. Let me know what you guys think. You guys run an invented catch can. You're not running a catch can at all. Are you running a sealed catch can? Do you guys mind seeing a little bit of smoke or not seeing the smoke or do you prefer not to see it or any of that stuff? I'd love to hear what you guys have to say. Leave it down in the comments. Um, anyway, guys, please subscribe. If you haven't already subscribed, I'd love to have you as a regular viewer in this channel. I'm really trying to grow it. I need all the help I can get. And as always, guys, until next time, I'll catch you in the shop.